Today we will be walking you through the entire process of pad printing two different size glass bottles using our TTN HP90 pad printer, our Automark AMGP ink, some common software, and our AMFMO open bed laser system. Hope this empowers you to create a bottle that is environmentally friendly with an image that is nearly permanent, all at a fraction of what stickers cost. I am by no means a graphic design artist, so I have decided to go with a common online resource such as Canva.com. We are not affiliated, but I believe this is a popular design medium, so I will take you through the process of using an image we create there to end up with a great looking product at the end. Logging into Canva.com, we go to create a design, then select the size. In this case, 1 inch by 2 inches. Then we start selecting some fonts we like. Being in Austin, Texas, I figured barbecue sauce would be appropriate. Let's drag and drop some more items and have some fun with this. We have imported our logo and we'll turn it black for this. Then we center it. Kind of like to put something up top to show the detail that can be achieved from pad printing. So let's put that there. Of course it is made with love. I'm using the copy and paste function and simply rotating this. Of course it's world famous too. I drop another item in, delete the bottom, Now I select Save as High Quality PDF. Now we go to Adobe Illustrator. We go to File, Place. Ignore the font request by clicking Close. If you don't have this program, you can also use Corel. Under Object, go down to Select Clipping Mask, and then click Release. Continue to do this until you can no longer see this option. The image is now ready to be modified for the laser. We're trying to show the items we scroll over and highlight to blue are suitable to be modified. The boxes surrounding the items and the unrecognized fonts need to be traced to achieve what we want to do. Here we are selecting all parts of the image and deleting any box that surrounds the image. We continue to do this until all boxes are gone. Next we select the unrecognized fonts and go to Create Outlines which makes the item traced. Then we simply remove the fill of the entire items and now we create the stroke line at 0.25 points to make sure it is able to be filled in in the laser system. Now let's export that as an SVG file. Next we will open our laser marking software and import this file into the software that comes preloaded on it. Here we see the file. Let's select all the items and group them together using the group together button at the top. So the bottle we have have a pour spout that is fairly large so I want to print these with the bottom facing the pad printer. To do this we need to rotate the image. Simply go up to modify and then down to transform. Here we hit the rotate button and type 180 into the degrees and click apply. Now I bring it back to the center of the work area and line up the printing plate or cliche with the red laser alignment button. Then I hatch the part using the hatch method. And then the laser marking begins. Then we make adjustments in the laser software by shrinking the image to print on the smaller bottle. On to the HP90. Open the box. Remove the contents. The TTN HP90 pad printer comes with a machine and a moving XY table with fixture clips inside. Base plate, pad, and ink cup. Ink, thinner, and hardener. Mounting hardware, tools, and the owner's manual. To begin we mark the two holes we will use to mount the HP90. Using a 1 quarter inch drill bit, we drill into the table. 
From the underside, we screw the machine into the table, stopping where the bolt is flush. The reason for this is because the base plate will sit flush with the machine. Next, loosen the pad holder. Take apart the pad holder insert and attach the pad. Reassemble the pad holder and place it back onto the machine. Here we're using the Need Silicone Quick Fixture Putty to create fixtures for the bottles. We take equal parts A and B and mold them quickly. This putty sets up in just a few minutes. We press the bottle into the putty to secure the bottle for printing. We can hold these in place by molding these onto a Lego part and mounting that onto the machine. For this video, we will simply use these without mounting. Both fixture pieces are done. Here we see a problem. To fix this problem, we simply drop the table to align it to the plane of the printing plate. Next, we align the table. Here we see the simulation of the print. Next we adjust the printing stop. Simply undo the dial and twist it when the pressure is correct. Now repeated products are easily duplicated including the pressure to print them. Next mix the ink. We are using AMG P series here. Add 30 grams of ink. Six grams of hardener. Stir well. Then add 15% of the ink, which is 4.5 grams of thinner, to the product. Here we are showing the consistency of the ink that you are trying to achieve. Figure 8 should disappear quickly. The ink is a fairly runny consistency. It should not be too thin or too thick. If it is too far thin or too thick, it could present problems in printing. Here we see the ink cup. This ink cup is unused. It should look this way when you are done printing as well. There are six magnets that pull the printing plate to the ink cup. There is a sharp steel ring included. This needs to be sharp so it scrapes the ink off the plate, leaving the residual ink in the image created. Damaging the ink cup, not cleaning this thoroughly, or not taking care of this part of the machine will result in leaking ink cups and poor image quality. It is important this be treated well and put away when not in use. Next, we fill the ink cup with the ink mixture. We place the cliché on the ink cup. This cliché is aluminum which allows long life and low cost. Therefore, a magnetic adapter plate needs to be used. Simply place the magnetic adapter plate on the ink cup. Turn the ink cup over. Attach it using the screws to the HP90. Clean the pad. Here we cover the part with clear printing tape to align the image in the fixture. Since our fixtures are not mounted, we will go straight to printing. Now let's print the smaller bottle. Lift up on the downward pressure rod and slide out the entire base plate. Rotate the base plate and drop the downward pressure rod back into the ink cup. Here it is important to note when the machine sits, we want it to sit over the image that will be used. 
This prevents the image from drying on the cliché. After a few seconds, the ink and thinner reactivate this ink in the well and it is ready to print. Again, we use tape to align the image. Let's print a couple. Our finished bottles are 100% the same and look very nice. Now let's clean up. Remove the cliché from the base plate. Slide the assembly apart. For ease of illustration, we will complete this part without ink to show the process. Slide the cliché off of the ink cup. Set the ink cup aside. Clean the cliché with cleaner and a soft towel. Dump the residual ink out and gently wipe out the ink cup. Here we see this being done using the AMCL ink cleaner. Now we see the ink cup covered in ink ready to be cleaned using our washout bin. This bin has a custom designed insert that allows the pigment to drop away from the ink cup and a lid designed to catch spills. Let's fill up the washout bin. Wearing rubber gloves, we fill up the washout bin. Sit the ink cup into the washout bin. After a few minutes, use a disposable paintbrush to clean out the ink cup. Use paper towels to dry and do a final cleaning. Your ink cup and machine are ready for the next job. Now your product looks great and your machine does too. Let us know what you would like to see in the comments below. For links to purchasing this machine, the laser, or anything else in this video, please visit them below or on our website at www.automarkco.com.